In this cichlid adventure, FinCast, one of the world's leading authorities on cichlids, talks about an aquarium favorite and one of the best ways to add color to your African cichlid tank. Well, we actually feed Extreme to our fish in store. We also recommend it to all of our customers. It is an excellent food, brings out the color, makes them more vibrant. It's the food I feed. Let's face it, when you talk about African cichlids, you're talking about fish that come from two different lakes. The very beautiful and colorful fish from Lake Malawi, and then the fish from Lake Tanganyika, which tend to have, for lack of a better term, more personality. Well, today I want to talk about a fish that allows you to actually take some of the color like you might get out of Lake Malawi and put it in a tank with your Tanganyikans and really have a beautiful bright spot in the aquarium. And who better to talk about the Lalupi than Rick Biro of Florida Exotic Fish. He's been importing and breeding these fish for four decades. Rick says it's among his most popular fish, and in his case, that's saying something. These are, are a very high-grade color uh, Lalupi. Um, the Lalupis come in from the wild. I get them all the time. They can be a yellow or a brown. But every now and then you get a really nice colored uh, Le Loopy like this, so this is what we breed with. And we breed them again in a pipe, a PVC pipe. It's a cave breeder, um, female sits inside of the cave, the male, uh, when she's ready to breed, the male uh, approaches, um, they lay eggs inside, at that point the male leaves, the female guards them. Um, they, they're heavy duty spawners, I mean, you can get 400 out of a, a nice size Le Loopy, it'd be no problem at all. It's a very popular um, Tanganyika fish. I would say amongst the Tanganyikan selling fish, Lelupi's probably one or two, because it is a nice yellow fish. Um, it's relatively not, it's not relatively aggressive. Um, it's a great little rock fish running in, it comes out, goes back in, so it's a nice addition to a Tanganyikan tank. It's almost like little reef fish. Yes, it? it is, yes, and we got some Julies in there, we got Marlarai in there, the checkered ones, and all these fish will, if there was a cave set up in there, they would, either the female would take over a cave and the males would approach and they would breed in there, and you could actually have babies even in your community tank. A lot of, not a lot of them would make it. I mean, some of them would get picked off, but still, it would be a, a nice, it's an excellent addition to a Tanganyikan tank. How dense do you keep a Tanganyikan tank? Do you recommend people do not not this density that you've got here today? How? Do, excuse me. And how many fish in, in uh, space? For like for breeding. Uh, just for a community Tanganyikan tank, if you want to have as much activity as you can, most people want to cram all the fish in they can. I'm an advocate of really of uh, from seeing these guys in my environment. There, you know, when I have a 6,000 gallon tank, I have 6,000 fish in it. But um, I'm an advocate of having plenty of fish so that nothing can be targeted and and picked on. Uh, uh, if these fish have an opportunity to weaken a fish, then yeah, they're going to go after the weak fish. So if you have one, two lelupi, I would suggest four lelupi or six lelupi. If you want a julies, I would suggest six julies. You could start off with big wild ones, but then you're dealing with aggression from the start. If you start off with a two inch julie, a two inch uh, lelupi, a two inch calvis, two inch compresseps, throw them all together in a tank. They grow up together, they take their spots and they hang out good. One thing when I was used to be an actual fish keeper at home, and I think it's something people should think about, when you introduce a new fish to the tank, it's sometimes really good to change the tank, move the rocks around. It makes everybody caught off guard. The new guy isn't picked on, new guy isn't standing out because he's coming to a tank where everybody's got its place. He's actually coming to a tank that's brand new for everybody. What we do at the farm is when we introduce a new wild fish to a population is we catch the whole tank out put the wild fish in there and then dump the net and everybody starts off new. So the uh, the Lalupi full size is what? Three Four inch would be a, a, a monster. And on uh, some of these fish, the males are um, bigger than the females and some of the Julies, the females are bigger than the males. So again, if we want to sex them, we tube them. And, and by that, I mean, we turn them over. Um, we look at their um, anal uh, hole and then the second hole is how you tell if it's a male or female. If it's a small hole, it's a male. If it's a bigger hole, it's a female. It's not easy at a glance. You can't look at the fish. No, you got to know what you're doing. 
it's not like with the peacock where you get the color variation from the male and the female. It, it's a it's a difficult thing, and you know I say it's like it's easy, but it's something we've been doing you know for 40 years, so it's something we do. You'll be hearing more from Rick Barrow as he and I have worked together now on a series that we've called Cichlid Adventures. And we'll be talking a lot about some of the things he's learned over the 40 years that he's been importing and raising and growing cichlids here in the United States. We'll talk about some of his travels to Africa when he was one of the pioneers among the first Americans to bring cichlids back over to the United States. There's some amazing stories out there that you've never heard. So those will be coming up in future FinCasts. Until then, please hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next FinCast.